Hey guys, um, I wanted to come to you today and I wanted to talk a little bit. Um, I wanted to first of all let you know I've been talking to different members of our church, mostly some of the older folks today, and um, everyone seems to be doing well. They seem to be encouraged. I hope that you're praying for all of your church family, that you're praying for our country, that you're praying for our world right now. There's a lot of sick people, and uh, I believe that prayer makes a difference. I'm going to read something to you, and then I want to tell you a story. Um, but this is from Exodus chapter 12 and verse 13. It says, And the blood shall be to you for a token on the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Check that out, okay? When I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. Um, I read that today, and I started thinking about a story that my grandfather used to tell. It was something that happened to him. He was about to leave this country and go preach a crusade over in Australia. And uh, he just happened to talk to Brother Alan Parent and told him that he had a layover in Detroit. And this was many years ago. My grandparents, they, uh, they flew and they landed there in Detroit. When they came out of the gate, there was Brother Alan Parent and his mother were there to meet my grandparents and spend time with them during their layover before they flew to Australia. Anyway, during that conversation, older sister parent, she said to my grandfather that her husband, Bishop L.A. Parent, believed, uh, had, had a couple of rules in life. Um, first rule was this, um, if someone won't walk, don't carry them. But the second rule was, when in trouble, plead the blood. And so my grandfather, he wrote that down. Um, he was he, he, he wrote down when in trouble plead the blood, and he took it and he put it in the inside uh, pocket of his suit coat that he was wearing to fly. And so they they hugged older sister parent and brother Alan parent. They got on the airplane and uh, they flew to Australia. Anyway, it, uh, one of the churches they were preaching in in Australia in the middle of my grandfather's sermon. All of a sudden, someone came in with a shotgun. They shot the pastor of that church in the back of the head. The pastor fell down dead. Um, there was chaos. Um, there was a couple of nurses that were there that confirmed that the pastor was dead. Blood was coming out of his nose and in other places. And, and uh, my grandfather, uh, he began to tell people, let's pray, let's pray. Well, it just so happened that he was wearing the same suit jacket that he had been wearing when he had met with the parents there in Detroit in that layover. And all of a sudden he pulled that little piece of paper out of his pocket and said, when in trouble, plead the blood. And so there uh, with that, that pastor dead uh, after being shot in the back of the head, um, gathered the congregation that was there together and they began to plead the blood of Jesus over this pastor and all of a sudden he began to cough he began to blink his eyes and God raised him up because there's power in the blood of the lamb and I, I want to ask you right now I, I want you to please begin to plead the blood over your home begin to plead the blood over your children begin to plead the blood over your church and over the uh, church members of your church plead the blood over our nation Plead the blood over our missionaries. Plead the blood over this world. We still need revival, and God wants us to have revival. I, I believe it's going to happen. There's power in the blood. Amen. God bless you. Hope you're doing well. You probably heard uh, some of my kids yelling in the background. Um, we're ready for school to start. Um, but anyway, everyone's doing well. We're doing fine. God bless you.